thank you very much, uh, <coughs> my good brother. Uh, thank you for remembering that you came to Nganja. And thank you very much, uh, <coughs> my brother here and my friend. Uh, the <coughs> good brother from uh, Cape Town, <coughs> who is uh, in charge of some people, uh, I, I, I was in Cape Town uh, two days ago, and I, I saw him there. I was a little bit busy uh, because I hadn't been to Cape Town for a long time. Uh, I was telling somebody in Cape Town, I looked at Cape Town for 10 years every day. I just across, there's a small river that you just across. There's an island there called the Robin. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, so I'm, I'm recognizing you. Uh, in, in, in Zulu, I would be saying, uh, I'm pleased, ladies and gentlemen, to be here today. But I must apologize that I could not come on time because uh, I, I had. Uh, somebody coming from Zambia who was living and who had to see me. <clears throat> it's a friend I've known for years. So I delayed. I'm very sorry. <clears throat> uh, next time I'll come before everybody comes to the hall <laughs> to cover for what has happened today. But thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for the opportunity that uh, I'm here. I'm sure many of you have seen me without me seeing you because I've been talked about. I've been given names and everything. But my name uh, is a complicated one. Uh, it's a whole sentence. <coughs> So I can't even explain, it's long. But of course, uh, because my parents were Christians, they gave also the name Jacob. The surname is Zuma. I become so popular because people think I always do wrong things when I don't. I always do the right things. <laughs> So thank you very much. Um, I'm so happy. I always love telling a nice story. It's because <clears throat> where I come from at Nganja, we, we don't speak Afrikaans. That's why I would apologize that I can't speak. I was in Pretoria in 1963. Uh, detailed. There was one something old ones will know which was called uh, 90 Days Detention Without Trial. <clears throat> and I was at the main prison there. I entered, uh, and I s a small cell, and I was told, somebody spoke Afrikaans point and point, and I was just looking, because I was hearing nothing. Okay. So I was sitting, and after some time, the door opened. No, I did not know that we were going to stand up. I was just because of respect, I stood up, and then they opened. Then there was a question posed to me. Tafar, where is your car key? What? I said, sorry, sir. <laughs> I don't understand Africans. <laughs> and I looked at myself, I was wearing a trousers which was a silver gray 
I said, why is he thinking I'm wearing a khaki trousers? <laughs> and I, 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 I said, no, I don't understand. I said, hey, Bons Pravares, your car, car, young. And I said, sorry, sir. So I thought I should speak in Zulu now. So I'm sad as bull. Girl, was I beaten up <laughs> by a group? And I said, what is this? And he went back and posed the question for the second time. Gaffer, what is your car key? I said, I looked around, I said, man, uh, <clears throat> I was thinking, what have I done? Why? I mean, literally, partly I did not understand. So, finally I was thinking, I was wearing an overcoat. There is something in my um, pocket which I was given at the reception. It was a card. So I, I took it out. As I took it out, he said, Moi, my cover, moi. <laughs> well, this is the thing. I've never forgotten that African's word because it was an experience. But that is even better. I was alone in the cell. I was alone. So what, what is it? Then I was taken later to another cell to meet the other fellows sitting there. Uh, and it, and <laughs> we make noise. Bah, 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 we talk. Bah, bah, bah. And with the word, I was very was very uh, sharp to say, no noise, please, no noise. And finally, one day, because we were in a cell, a long cell, we were making noise. Whenever we hear the keys, we keep quiet. You wouldn't know which cell was making the noise. And finally, he had a plan. I had given him a name called Gandagan at the tractor because he walked like this. <laughs> and he pretended he was locking the doors and he was not. He was just pushing the doors. So we were making noise. Bah, 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 bah. In the cell, there was uh, only one person who knew Africans. All of us did not know. One fellow came from Cape Town. I wondered why he does not know Africans. His name was Rasa. Russell and Bali. And the water was moving slowly. And he got to our door. And he opened slowly. And as he opened, we all jumped. <laughs> he said, Yeah, we magrasi so, huh? We magrasi so. And this um, friend of ours is was standing. He said, Yes, say, I am Russell, sir. <laughs> and 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 the the, the, the water said, e bravi, ma, says, my name sir is Rasa. Yes, sir. <laughs> and um, he realized this fellow does not understand. And he and he and, and he, he, he pulled back. He said, "Money be rasne, money be rasne." And then he, as he closed the door, the fellow who knew Africans just fell down with laughter. He nearly died. I said, why? He says, man, the water is asking who is making noise. You are saying, I am noise. <laughs> so don't worry if I speak very... I can't even say a word in Africans, by the way. I'm just... <laughs> Uh, uh, talking. But thank you very much for the opportunity that I'm here. Uh, I've told, I've been told that uh, because I delayed, uh, there will be another business here, and therefore there is no time. But I would love uh, one day to have enough time, my brother. Uh, I am Jacob Zuma from Kanzla. Kanzla is a place deep in Zululand. 
where I come from. I grew up there as a head boy. I had no opportunity to go to school because my father died when I was very young. I tried to educate myself just to be able to talk to people. And I succeeded to do so. I then joined the struggle to fight for freedom. And I, I, I come from where people will remember who have looked at history. Uh, the last war between white and black was at um, Tanja, Bambata War. That's where I come from. Thanks God, that was the last one of all the wars. Because thereafter we had to talk, we had to find ways how to live together, etc., etc. And therefore I became a politician. Uh, at my early age, as I told you, told you, I was when I was when I was asked the question, what is Bakarki? I was <laughs> 22 years, I was finishing my 23, very young, and I went to Robben Island, and I spent my 10 years there, punished for trying to fight for freedom. I finished it. I came out, and I found a job. I worked, but I continued. <laughs> um, but I realized la later, I was about to be arrested for the second time. I left the country. Went to Switzerland. I stayed there for a short while. So that's where I met this man who was talking about me the uh, day before yesterday, Tabombeki. I met him in Switzerland for the first time. Um, later, I went to stay in Mozambique, the way I spent almost closer to a decade. And I was given every other kind of task to undertake. We had a very good president, very kind man. <clears throat> um, the man was called uh, Tambo. <clears throat> he was a Christian, but he was leading the ANC. Of course, it went and went and went, and finally, I was the first to be sent in South Africa to come and start what was called talks about talks. To start the discussion between us and the government and stop fighting. I came and I can tell you the fellow who was with me <coughs> he's now looks like an old man. He was drinking a bottle uh, as we came in, probably half the bottle, but he did not get drunk because of the fear. <laughs> he did not know what was going to be happening. That followed an interesting thing. Tabumbegi myself were sent by Tambo to go and meet the delegation from the government in South Africa, sent by a man who was very strong. Uh, who was the president uh, of the Republic of South Africa. This <coughs> leader was P.W. de Klerk. Oh, no, sorry, 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 sorry. It was P.W. Porter. P.W. Porter. He sent two guys. Uh, it was a first meeting between us, the ANC, government. He sent a man who was called um, Mike Lowe. I'm sure a few of you of will know him. But two in the intelligence of the government. <clears throat> uh, he was with a man called um, um, Spavard. I'm sure some will know him. I think he was maybe number three or number four in the top uh, levels of government. And they said, uh, 
Dr. Bernard said hello to you guys. <laughs> That's that fine. These two presidents, Tambo and T.W. Porter, had asked us to come to this secret meeting to start discussing to stop the war and change this country. We met at about eight somewhere in Europe and talked until two o'clock a.m. It was the most serious meeting. It was the first meeting formally between us and the government. And the issue was that let us have peace in South Africa. Let us stop the war. And we had agreed. And all the issues we discussed, we agreed. When we finished, I said to these <clears throat> the three guys, I was number four, I remember an old story of a king who once ruled in South Africa, King Shaka. When he, his mother died, he declared that no <clears throat> tilling of uh, soil, no eating, we must help uh, to cry with him for his mother. But what is a secret is that he had actually killed his mother. <laughs> but he said everybody must <laughs> That's true, because he had a very funny theory that he must not give birth to a child who is a boy. Any boy who would be born must be killed. And his logic was that if they grow, they become big. They will kill him in order to take over. Very funny thinking. As a result, people began dying of starvation. And there was one of his shagas, uh, <clears throat> Indunas, strong man, who was also a leader. He thought the, the country was dying. And Shaga wanted to come whenever he came, you must cry, because his mother has died. And where to get the tears? People developed a, um, a method of taking a snuff in order to call tears. If somebody said, hey, his mother is coming, they took And the, by the time he comes in, they are crying. <laughs> so he said, mm -hmm. he was happy. Very funny man. Um, but this man called Gala felt this man is now Maluku. He decided to go to him, to challenge him. Everybody was afraid to tell him, don't do this. He came. He started praising him as he came across the river, as he's coming, and praised him praised him until he came. He was sitting with his, uh, with his men. And he said, at the end, when he finished praising the king, he said, King, we all regret for your mother dying. And we have said we must mourn. And we have been mourning. But he said we must not plow food. We must not do anything. The reality is that your people are now dying as a result of your instruction. Please, please, it is enough. We can't die more. If we all die, what nation are you going to rule? There will be no nation. So I've come to say we have done it enough. 
it must stop. The man was brave. Because everybody was afraid that, uh, was afraid that this infestation is going to kill you. And he turned to his man and said, why didn't you advise me? They were thinking he's going to say kill him. And he said, you are a hero. He gave him a very high level of <clears throat> uh, recognizing the hero. And he gave him a huge <clears throat> cattle group to take home. And he said, you are one of the best. And, and these guys who were in Dunas, when he, he, they were almost going to their spears, thinking that he's going to say, stab them, stab him. He didn't. I said so when we had that meeting in the, in the dark. And I said, I remember this story. And I, I, I think I'm telling a story that our problems of fighting has come to an end. Both President Tambo and President P.W. Bota have taken a first step, an important decision that there is no need for us to fight. And when I finished telling the story, Spa Vater said, you know, this operation that you are here, we must name it Dala. Huh? I said, fine, whatever name. I'm telling this story, <clears throat> my brothers and sisters, because now I look a little bit older than what I was then. <laughs> I'm still very young, by the way. <laughs> if I've got ladies here, must be careful. <laughs> I'm saying this because this is an opportunity for me to say we are all South Africans, we are together. We belong to this country. How the history has been is one thing. There is no country without its own history. And in some, there are painful parts of the, of the, the, the road, I mean, the, the road that we travel, etc. We finally came, I was part of those who were negotiating from talks about talks, etc., etc. We finally said, yes, South Africa is free. And we have lived 30 years now since then. And South Africa is fine. But politics is politics. I always say, I don't know why I became a politician. Because politicians, they have all colors. Very few you can say these are straight. <laughs> they always walk like this. They look around because they, they create enemies. And, and then they are, they are also running away. But in the process, in the process, things did not come correct together. Because there are issues in the negotiations we did not talk about. And that, I think, we made a mistake. My own thinking was, after the negotiations, once there would be no fight, would be peace, we can then say, look, what is it that was left unattended to? Because we need to attend to everything. We need every South African to feel happy. We need every South African to feel, I am at home. But I think our colleagues and everybody else, we were together, we did everything. But at some point, things did not go very well. In a country, everybody must feel happy. And that should be our job to do so. But unfortunately, there were some things that were left unattended to. And instead of attending to those matters, instead of attending to those matters, by not attending to them, it began to make people to think in different directions. 
and to act in, in, a, in wrong ways. That is what has taken at least this young fellow from Ganja to where he is today. I've had a lot of discussion with my brother uh, and we've agreed on everything we talk about. Absolutely. Because we need peace. But if those who are in power don't listen and nothing happens and they sit as if nothing is wrong, then that becomes a problem. As you know, at some point I became the president. But I did not finish it. <clears throat> Politicians said to go. I said, why? Yeah, just go. I can tell you what, what they said to me one day. I said, there's a new president who's talking about, uh, what is the word? Huh? The new dawn, the new something. We want him a chance to exercise that. I said, but there's a policy that when to have a president, he must establish himself, blah, 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 blah. No, 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 go, 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 go. There's, there's a lot of stories I can tell about that. But I said, fine. I don't want people to stress one another because of me. I wrote a letter. I'm resigning. After all, I did not, I had not wanted to be a president. I was pushed to be. But for me, the man, <clears throat> I mean, even the other president who was said to leave before he finished his time, people are complaining. He did not give. He refused people to get the treatment for blah, blah, blah. I said, please don't do it because it will be a tendency that you will always say you go while people have elected a person. But nevertheless, things went wrong in my view. And they went wrong step by step. And finally, I did not know what to do. You try to advise, firstly, older than him, secondly, knowing politics. He doesn't know politics. I know him because uh, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not uh, criticizing a person. He doesn't know politics. Because if you know politics, you behave differently. I tried to raise the matter. Don't do things like this. You can't make one side of people or your, or your people happy, others not happy. If you are in charge of the country, everybody must be happy. And if people are complaining, take care of their complaints. Listen. So, in a sense, I came to a point where I said, well, even myself, I have to be hiding. I don't want to talk more about those kind of things. But as you know, I even at one point was poisoned. Uh, and what have I done? I mean, there are a number of things we can talk about. Now, I, I'm, I'm a kind of a person, very honest. I, start, I, I fought for freedom because I meant it. And I said, this man, everybody's complaining. When I was the president, some people started this thing, what do you call it, when the gas goes away, it comes back. Huh? 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 Lord, Lord shaded. <laughs> Lord Shady. Lord Shady. It was started by people when I was in government who agreed, wanted to do business through uh, uh, <laughs> tenders, maybe, maybe tenders, yes. <laughs> but there was, there was money at the um, of 
the company that deals with the electricity. Four billion. I did not even know. The minister, who was the minister of finance, came to me to say, they've used money without asking or telling us. Because in terms of the law, even if it is your money, you've got it to report it to the, uh, the, <coughs> the finance minister that there is this money, we want to use it for X, Y, so that he's able to record. He said they've just used the money. They used the money to take diesel, to substitute the coal with diesel and make their companies. That's how this thing, where this thing comes from. And therefore they gave a false thing that the coal is not right will use the diesel. And because they were taking the money and doing so, and pretended as if the coal is not right at all. And he came to tell me, I said, that is totally out of order. So I immediately took a decision. I'm not afraid to take a decision. Quick, quick. I said, can't do it. I then brought innocent people to come and correct the thing. Shortly, <coughs> we stopped. And the old ladies in the, ho in the home, they call it, what they call it? Um, kishi kishi. <laughs> kishi kishi. Meaning the light goes away, it comes back, it goes away. We stopped it. And I even made a statement that they will, it will never be there again. And it was true. I also suspect that even the reason why I should leave, the, I was made to leave being the president, they wanted this business. I was an obstacle. So I was off, they went back. Up to this day, we have a problem. And I said, I know this, I never told anybody. Why do I allow it? Because we are making this country to be a laughing stock. That's why I took a decision that whilst I'm still alive, let me use my understanding to remove this man whom at some point was my president. Because the country is getting worse. When I went to the conference of the ANC, I decided not to go there as a former president, as a delegate, because I wanted to debate these matters. I raised my hand until this one was tired. I took out this one. It also got tired. <laughs> Comrades to help to me to, to say, hey, hey, nobody was seeing me. Until he said, well, meetings and, and now we go to the groups where we discuss matters. I walked to the chair and the president and I said, why didn't you point me to speak? Because I've got views about how you are handling the party and the country. They said, no, 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 no. You will talk when you are at the commissions. And I went to the commission. Unfortunately, I'm just a fellow from Gandra. My sophistication is not there. I'm just me. I then raised the matter in the commissions. I said, I think you are not running the organization properly. You are not running the country properly. This is not what I sacrificed my life for. Why are you doing this? And I said, this president of this organization is actually not the president, the genuine one. Not genuine. Because... <coughs> Somebody gave information about him in public that has been given money to buy 
the position to be the president. And when he went to the commission, because that allegation had been made, he was asked, <coughs> did you get money to pay for you to be charged, I mean to become a president? Under oath, he agreed. And oath, he agreed, said yes. And therefore, he was not the president that was elected honestly by members. And I said, I have a problem. Why did the leadership not talk to him? And I said this in the commission, honestly. And I said, firstly, this man is not a president. He's a fake was bought. When there was an attempt to investigate what was said, he also broke the law. Because when the public protector said, answer these questions today, the following day he sacked the people. Now you can't have a man who thinks the country belongs to himself. It's totally out of order. You can't remove a policeman because we are a president, because he wants to arrest you. That's not what I thought this country should be. There's no man who has such a power. Not at all. So I said, sorry. I was saying it now in the conference, in the commission. This man is not a president. Secondly, a man called Mackenzie <coughs> said to him, he is a spy for the CIA. And he said, if you, if, you, if you don't agree, let us go to court. I'll prove it to you. I've got evidence. He never said, I'm not a spy for the Americans. Secondly, his former comrade, Terrell Gorda, in parliament, I'm sure many of you saw, he said, you were a spy, and you, we, we, we went to prison. So you did not went because you asked to be released. And nothing happened. The leadership of the ANC did nothing. They then started making all funny stuff. There are some laws and rules, kick aside or step aside. I don't know, I can't remember what it says. But they in whole Secretary General of when he was not found any guilty, because he had never gone to court. And in his mad chance, people found <coughs> rands and dollars hidden. And his colleagues said, he's a clean man. The big judges, he's a clean man. But the man committed a crime. So these are the matters I raised. I said, therefore, you can't have just a president. Why do you have him? I, 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 I was never, even when I was arrested, I, I, I said what I wanted to say. Now, this is what made me, because after that, they did something they've never done in the history of the ANC since 1912. Once they saw my contribution coming now to be discussed in the bigger thing, they decided to say, no, we are postponing this conference. It has never been postponed before. And the conference never set. Only different meetings of a, see, I mean, a, um, what is it? National Executive Committee here, provinces in their places. That was not a conference. I realized this organization is no longer the organization I joined. I was in all the time. This one, I call it the organization of, Ra of Ramaphosa, not our resolution. And therefore, I took a decision 
I can't be ruled by this party under this man. But I can't keep on opening new parties like uh, people do. We've got so many parties, we don't know for what reason. So I decided to revive Mkondo Sisu as a political party to rescue the aims and rescue the country. And that's the reason why I took the decision. Mine is that we need a peaceful South Africa. We need all of us to feel at home. It is in that process that I've been raising the issues because there is no equality in South Africa. And I think it is our duty to work to create harmony. If other people are starving, are dying, and others have everything, I don't think that is what God wants. I don't think this is what we all want. But I believe we, as South Africans, we need to sit and talk. How do we correct this? How do we correct that? Because the majority in South Africa, if we talk about unemployment, it affects those who have been oppressed before. Why can't we correct that? Why do we want to see to this pain? I think is not right. We need to sit like this and discuss and agree how do we correct this. We are all South Africans. I've had a lot of discussions with the brothers, the Khoisan, who have been rejected all the time. Why? And they've got things to raise they want peace, we all want peace. And that's why I said, at my time, at my age, I would love that. Perhaps we should not put uh, politicians always to be the solver of all problems. But at the time they create problems. Oh yeah, they do. Politicians, they do. They are politicians and politicians. I mean, I can't believe, for an example, that instead of having probably two political parties in South Africa, we have parties that I can't count. Why? But there are stories and stories around that one. I, I, I therefore have been talking to my brother and friend here and my sister to say, I would love such an, an occasion where we could sit when we have time as South Africans and talk about our country. And talk about our country, the health, the life, the happiness. We have everything in this country. We are one country that God loved by having everything we need to look after ourselves. I think it is important that as South Africans do not shy away from saying you are making a mistake please let us work together let us be there because if we don't do so we, we might be thinking backward this is not right we must be thinking forward because it is us today, tomorrow it will be our children, after tomorrow it will be our grandchildren and great-grandchildren. We, we must always say we want to see them in peace in our country. Because if we don't do so, we have other people thinking and uh, getting angry this way and that way, and life is not nice if it is like that. Uh, some of us who believed we were oppressed and fought for freedom, we want freedom. We don't want freedom that is not complete. We don't want freedom that is one-sided. It's not right. Fortunately, or 
but unfortunately, I speak my mind. I was born like that, and I will sure will die like that. Speaking my mind. If I'm saying anything wrong, tell me. If I'm wrong, I can rest as I will tell you, yes, I'm wrong. I've always said so. Even when I got arrested, I said, yes, I committed crime. Yes. And I said, these were the reasons that made me to do this. And I believed in my reason, because I believed that there should be no oppression of one man by the other. We should always be free. We are all God's children. I said before I left, I think we must have free education. Because if we don't do so, we are making other people to remain poor. If they are poor and hungry, they are going to come and steal from you who have. And there will be crime in the country. Crime is because some people are literally have nothing to eat. And they then come to steal. They are not, not, they are not going to die because they are hungry. They are going to try to find ways and means. They will even become experts in stealing. Yes, because they are hungry. Give them food, make them feel happy, fine. So the reason why I said there must be free education was I want every children in this country to be forced to be educated so that they can be of use in the country, not of a problem. I don't think it is good to see black children drinking from the morning to the dead to the uh, uh, sunset. And then you create, you, you allow that, that number of population to grow. It's wrong. We should be sitting and saying, how do we deal with this? And I'm saying, once MK takes over, every child must be at school by force. Every child, no child must be roaming around. It's wrong. If the children, I mean, our, 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 for an example, our government makes the law, don't touch your child. If you touch your child, you are charged. And the child, the children are given uh, um, number, no, number, num numbers to phone the police. My mommy, no, we, the reason why we are what we are, because our mothers grew us and fathers properly. You do something wrong, what are you doing? This is never done. Absolutely. And you become a real human being. I don't know in our country, particularly we, who come from oppression, Kids of 12, 12, 13 years give birth to children. That can't be. Why? Why don't we stop it? We want to live with it as if it's normal. It's not normal. It's abnormal. If you do so, you are killing the, you are killing the nation. And under the leadership of MK, no child will give birth to, a, to, to another child. Well, that is just, I don't know what to call it. And I'm telling everybody in South Africa, they rather not vote for me. That happens, I take that child, we are going to make a university in Robben Island. I'll take them there. They'll study until they are big, they are doctors. And then to come to be human beings. We cannot allow it. You can't have the Minister of Police enjoying coming to us like this, nicely dressed and big uh, black hat, only to tell us the crime has gone up, 
they, this time they come as slightly condemned. He's not telling us that he's stopping crime in the country. There's nothing of that report. You can't have that. You can't. I can be hated, I don't care. Because we must build a nation. A decent nation. Deal with other things properly. Talk about things we are not happy about. Sit down. Agree, disagree, a compromise, give and take. That's how we can live. For me, I feel we are worse this time around than we were before Krino. <laughs> and to me, it is the duty of all of us as South Africans to correct the wrongs. We can't just stand and look. It is absolutely crucial. You cannot have a president <coughs> who looks like a huge criminal and be proud that this is our president. <coughs> well, I don't know about that. I'm just talking. <laughs> <clears throat> so for me, I would want to use this opportunity to, tell, to say, let us, and I'm, I thank you very much, my brother, because <clears throat> at times one does not get this opportunity. But this is my thinking. This is my thinking, and I can give you details why I chose MK. I did not come with a sophisticated word, democratic or democracy or whatever, because all of those things are just names. Because we are told, if you, if you want to know what is democracy, we are told is a good country that rules with the majority uh, <coughs> agreeing on things, then that's fine. But there are laws that have been made, laws, which are not made by us, the majority. Not. They are made by a minority that we take to put in parliament, who come from different political parties, representing different kind of ideologies and ideas, and they are making laws for us. We are sitting. We only do this is called um, majority rule once in five years, only, when we vote. After that, we vote for nothing. We are just sitting and looking. In my village, <clears throat> the chief who is younger than me asked me to come to their place where they sit. <laughs> they said to me, this law, this law. We are in Parliament when this law is made that a man must marry another man. Um, I was asked. And that because two men cannot produce a child, they have the right to buy a child because maybe they have money. And then, in other words, put the third person in this business of theirs who must now not understand whether it's a man or a woman, whatever. So I said, no, it's democracy. <laughs> I said, that's democracy. I said, what democracy means? Means the majority rules. But you are told there is a majority rule in South Africa, but it's actually not. There's majority rule once in five years. Every day, it is the people who have their own ideas who are in Parliament who take decisions. They don't even consult you. Here, majority rule is just in words, not in reality. Because if it was in reality, all of us here would have heard somebody saying, here is a, a law being made in Parliament. What is your view? We would all know 
we shared our views and the majority would have ruled. This one is not. Some fellow there who keep on saying, order, order, you know, all of those kind of discussions. It is not us. My view is that under MK, we must sit and actually agree this is how we want to run the country. We must have meetings like this where we are able to get the views of the citizens about whatever issue. And then if majority have said this is what we'll find then, then we'll be really practicing majority. All the young fellows, this one who are drinking and smoking taha and smoking all funny stuff, when we are just sitting and looking, is going to get finished. All the kids at school, the boys, once they finish matric in the army to be taught how to defend the country and to respect people. <laughs> If they feel they have now completed, then we take them to the universities. Not a single one who's going to stay with them at three. We force them. We also force them to do real education so that they are able to develop this country rather than to kill it. <clears throat> That's how we're going to do it. And I hope we'll all agree that no child must have a child, no child must drink. <coughs> it's never done. There's one thing more in church energy. You can't just drink in front of us. No man can shang and Sorry, I'm I'm uh, <laughs> I just thought I should tell you this story because I often not have the opportunity. I'm just me. I'm not, I was not made by other people. Just me. Never went to school because my father died. My mother died when I was in exile. I only heard she died after four months. I said, well, that's a decision I took. Mine was to make a South Africa that is peaceful, that is happy, that is the world among worlds. And I think all South Africans should be thinking like that. We need peace. We need to be a country that is not starving. And we must sit together to say, for an example, how do we remove unemployment? How do we take kids who go to school and come back with <coughs> a kind of, uh, I want to say it lightly, but they come as particularly black ones. They come as um, kids that have got degrees, but their degrees are useless. They can't find work because the degrees is just choose. There's no proper direction of our citizen that they must study what is going to develop the country. Social work. They love it. What are you going to do? You need few social workers. We don't need the whole army. Absolutely. And it means those who are in charge of education, they must produce the children of South Africa who are clever, who can do, who can build trains, who can uh, planes and everything. And that's how countries develop. Just to go and study for the whole time, just to come to look to the old ladies as a social worker, we need a smaller number of such. And that must be determined by the universities. 
so that you produce scientists. Scientists who are going to do a lot in this country of ours. It's a job of a government. It's a job of the nation. We should agree to do so. Because otherwise, we are going to produce drunkards. Kids, when they are 16, they've got three kids already. No. Uh uh. I disagree. And I've said, I'm going to, hey, I'm, go, I'm going to win the elections. Because I'm sure people like ourselves, you know what we need. And I'm going to change the wrong laws. This democracy that, that allows kids to drink and small children to phone the police that my mother and daddy they are beating me. That democracy for me mm -mm. it must happen when I'm no longer in this world. Not when I'm still here. When I'm still a, a South African. It's going to come to a stop. We are going to have South Africa. <laughs> South Africa that we want. South Africa that people have built long walls to stop criminals. No. We must live in peace. There should be no criminal. That's my view. My little one. It's not a big view. It's a small one. But very correct. I'm, happy. I'm, I'm happy about it. Thank you very much. I, I, I've taken a lot of your time. Uh, I love people. I love people. We don't know how much. My friend here knows. <laughs> Because he's my friend. And he's a man I respect because he's, he shares his views all the time. He does not hide his views. This is what we want. Honesty. What you think, share it. It's going to be a wonderful thing. At the end, if we want South Africa to change, to be a South Africa, we know this is the moment. Vote MK. You will realize shortly thereafter that you took the right decision. <clears throat> I don't fear anyone. I fear no president. I fear no one. That has been my nature. That's why I tell him, I tell him wherever he is because I took a decision that I don't want to have a meeting with him. Because I, I want to talk to real people, not fake. Sorry, I'm using the wrong word for a man who's running the country. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, I'm a South African and I remain, and I love South Africa. I love everyone here. That's why I wouldn't want even a child to sleep without eating. I feel bad about it. And I want to try to participate in creating a South Africa of all. Who will see everyone, no matter what color. We are the same. We are South Africans. Let us be together. Thank you very much for the opportunity, my brother, and everybody else, and uh, <clears throat> my friend from Cape Town. I have had a lot of discussion with the Khoisan, that that thing is going to be corrected. You must not feel away you are not enough human beings. We are, all of us. God made us to look like we are because he wanted to see us all in different colors. It is God, it's not us. We are the same. We are the same people. We are South Africans. Let us make South Africa our wonderful country. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Mr. President. Um, if I may just to end, uh, put you on the spot a bit, because I said at the beginning there are a lot of Afrikaner people around you, and there's also a lot of them watching us from the whole country. Right. Now, one of the questions is, I know the answer, but um, are you ever going to give an order saying, kill them all? Because there's Afrikaners believing that um, they are going to be exterminated, and one single order from your side will do the trick. Um, my easy response, and Mr. President, you confirmed it today, and, and, and I think for everybody that's here, they get to meet the real uh, President Jacob Zuma. I'm not going to try to pronounce your middle name sentence, Mr. President, but um, I think, and, and, and this is the person that we met when I was with Louis, and we, you, you took us into your home, and you gave everybody a bit of yourself today. Um, but my answer would be, because you told us that day, your whole life you've been a freedom fighter. You've been fighting for people, you've been fighting for people's lives. So why on this earth would you now suddenly turn around and give orders to kill or harm people? And, and also, um, in other words, you would betray who you are. The other point from me as a lawyer is, of course, maybe if that were so, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. President, to keep you, um, is then, uh, if that was so, you wouldn't have had the problem with the current president no more. So it would have been easy for you to resolve that problem. Um, so, Mr. President, um, then what they also do, some of them, because obviously, remember the Afrikaners are diverse. It's a wide spectrum, from the left to the far right, etc. Um, they bring up the story of Peter Tief, and they say, be careful. Now, that happened 180 years ago. I mean, we're now in 2024. And, and um, I'm of German descent. Imagine what they will be thinking if I come to power, what I will do. Because all of the stuff the Germans did. So, and I also know there's obviously two sides to the story of Peter Tief historically. Um, which we should also take note of. But um, I think, and I know it may sound funny to, to put this to you, um, are you going to exterminate the Afrikaner people? Are you going to chase them into the sea? Or what is your intention with them, Mr. President? <laughs> Thanks God you said you are a German. <laughs> because <clears throat> the Germans, oh, what they did to those guys there who were doing something, others. <laughs> <laughs> no, the point I want to make real is that there is history that we, that, we, that we went through, everybody. Not just between black and white, black and black. The man I was talking about here, Shaka, <clears throat> created a, a, a nation out of <clears throat> very, very tough kind of stuff. And in South Africa as well, it is not just white, black and white. Black and black in particular. <clears throat> they still have problems among themselves. I think what I was saying here is that we develop, all of us, from olden days to today, today. and we'll always be saying to ourselves, let us be together. Let us unite. We are not going to kill anyone. Not at all. <clears throat> you know, when, we, when, when, when there was an armed struggle in South Africa, we were the only liberation movement that signed an agreement with the international body. 
<clears throat> that if you arrest, you don't kill. <clears throat> You're the only one. That is why when we came back, we were of all the liberation movements. They came back with no, what we call them, pimpies. We came back with them, which indicates how we were <clears throat> looking at the future, particularly under the leadership of uh, Tambo. Tambo signed the Red Cross <clears throat> agreement that in the war, people will die, but if you arrest, you will not kill. And that is the policy we adopted. <clears throat> in fact, I can just tell you an interesting story. When we were here, <clears throat> Mandela asked the president um, of Zimbabwe, Mugabe, because he was saying, man, what do we do? What did you do with your informers? Mukabe said, informers? No. I mean, after freedom, he said, no, there were no informers. Why were we to do, what were we going to do with them? Hmm. He says, no, but didn't you arrest some of the guys who were sent by the enemy? He says, oh, and then? He says, yes, we did. So what did you do with them? He said, no, by the time we came back, was there not a single one li alive? <laughs> So we had no problem how to handle them after freedom. We are the only ones who did so. That tells you uh, the, the policies that we followed, that even other political, I mean, in relation, um, freedom fighters did not do. And I think that's the reason why I, I perhaps I was chosen to come to start talks about talks and to bring South Africa where it was supposed to be. No killing. And that is why, even now, I feel that if we don't correct some of the things, it might lead to people <clears throat> saying, well, maybe let us fight again. That's why I'm saying we need to sit and talk and make our South Africa our country. I will never kill anyone. There will never be such episode. Which were there within blacks and blacks, white and whites, black and whites. We have passed that stage. We are at the stage where we can sit and talk and conclude our discussions and our agreements. So no one should fear me. <laughs> Absolutely, I'm just a simple guy from Ganja, very simple. I, I, I grew up with the sticks, fighting. So I know how to fight. <clears throat> uh, but I believe you have no right to kill another person. It's not your person. That is why discussion, getting into agreement, is what we need to do for our country. Whoever will kill somebody else, he will see me. He will see me what type of a person I am. Because we have got no right to kill another human being when you don't want to be killed. You have the right to bring people together to discuss their problems and find solutions. I often say, <clears throat> in the olden days, we had no death sentence. Even Shaga, the most famous fellow. In our culture, only one person was killed. That the right, and you did not even have to make the law, just deal with it. A wish. Mtagat. That's a person. If you are found <laughs> doing witchcraft and killing people, they are killed there. You don't have to go to court. Absolutely. Because we didn't believe that killing another human being was our right. And it is not up to this day. In fact, one of the things when MK is, is in government, we are going to discuss that issue. <coughs> Should we abolish death sentence or not? Because people are killing each other today like they're just killing a, a, a chicken. Boop, boop, everybody's dying. 
We cannot allow it. And we must sit and talk. It must be a decision of the South African society that must say, should we have it or not? Can we not... <clears throat> can we not stop the crime without killing? I think these are matters in my view. If I win, the society must talk about and take decisions. I am not very happy with a smaller group of people taking serious decisions, like killing. Let us either stop or do the what you call uh, uh, <coughs> the death sentences. Let South Africans say so and tell us why they say we should do this. They must be part. They must be part and parcel of discussing those matters. They must be part and parcel of the decision that the government takes. Government must be given direction by the voters. That's what I believe in. So nobody is going to die. Next to me, you will live forever. Don't worry. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. And then you've got another problem. Because you're a glamour person, and you've got this personality. Uh, we also understand that you've got a few moves. And your entourage, including your family members, uh, asked me to ask you if perhaps you can... We, we're going for lunch now. And maybe you can perform something for the cameras, Mr. President. Like, you are well known for a lot of songs and a lot of dance. But... I'm, it is a request, uh, Mr. President, if you are happy to, I will hand the microphone back to you. Okay, let me see. <laughs> Um shinuam, um shinuam, I will let 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 um shinuam, um shinuam, um shinuam, um shinuam, um shinuam, me way baba. I will let um shinuam, um shinuam, um shinuam, um shinuam. Um shinua mi wei baba. How let um shinua mi shinua. Um shinua mi shinua. Um shinua mi wei baba. Hi wei ni ang bambezela. Um shinua mi shinua. Um shinua mi wei baba. I will not move to Bambezela. Um, Senua, Mim Senua, Um, Senua, me, way, Baba. Evo, Baba, thank you. Hey, wow. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Baba. The best. Thank you. <laughs>